Worlds in Collision is a book of wars in the celestial sphere that took place in historical time. In these wars, the planet Earth participated too. This book describes two acts of a great trauma, one that occurred 34 to 35 centuries ago, in the middle of the second millennium before the present era, the other in the eighth and beginning of the seventh century before the present era. 26 centuries ago, accordingly, this volume consists of two parts, preceded by a prologue. Harmony, or stability, in the celestial and terrestrial spheres is the point of departure of the present-day concept of the world as expressed in the celestial mechanics of Newton and the theory of evolution of Darwin. If these two men of science are sacrosanct, this book is a heresy. However, modern physics of atoms and of the quantum theory describes dramatic changes in the microcosm, the atom, the prototype of the solar system, a theory then that envisages not dissimilar events in the microcosm. The solar system brings the modern concepts of physics to the celestial sphere. This book is written for the instructed and uninstructed alike. No formula, no hieroglyphic will stand in the way of those who set out to read it. If occasionally historical evidence does not square with formulated laws, it should be remembered that a law is but a deduction from experience, an experiment, and therefore laws must conform with historical facts not the facts with laws. The reader is not asked to accept a theory without question. Rather, he is invited to consider for himself whether he is reading a book of fiction or nonfiction, whether he is reading his invention or historical fact. On one point alone, not necessarily decisive for the theory of cosmic catastrophism, I borrow credence. I use a synchronical scale of Egyptian and Hebrew histories which is not orthodox. It was in the spring of 1940 that I came upon the idea that in the days of the Exodus, as evident from many passages of the scriptures, there occurred a great physical catastrophe, and that such an event could serve in determining the time of the Exodus in Egyptian history, or in establishing a synchronical scale for the histories of the peoples concerned. Thus, I started Ages in Chaos a reconstruction of the history of the ancient world from the middle of the second millennium, before the present era, to the advent of Alexander the Great. Already in the fall of that same year, 1940, I felt that I had acquired an understanding of the real nature and extent of the catastrophe, and for nine years I worked on both projects, the political and natural histories. Although Ages and Chaos was finished first in the order of publication, it will follow this work. Worlds in Collision comprises only the last two acts of the cosmic drama. A few earlier acts, one of them known as the Deluge, will be the subject of another volume of natural history. The historical cosmological story of this book is based on the evidence of historical texts of many peoples around the globe, on classical literature, on epics of northern races, on sacred books of the peoples of the Orient, and Occident, on traditions and folklore of primitive peoples, on old astronomical inscriptions and charts, on archaeological finds, and also on geological and paleontological material. If cosmic upheavals occurred in the historical past, why does not the human race remember them? And why was it necessary to carry on research to find out about them? I discuss this problem in the section Collective Amnesia. The task I had to accomplish was not unlike that faced by a psychoanalyst who, out of disassociated memories and dreams, reconstructs a forgotten traumatic experience in the early life of an individual in an analytical experiment on mankind. Historical inscriptions and legendary motifs often play the same role as recollections, infantile memory and dreams in the analysis of a personality. Can we, out of this polymorphous material, establish actual facts? We shall check one people against another, one inscription against another, epics against charts, geology against legends, until we are able to extract the historical facts. In a few cases, it is impossible to say with certainty 
whether a record or tradition refers to one or another catastrophe that took place through the ages. It is also probable that, in some traditions, various elements from different ages are fused together. In the final analysis, however, it is not so essential to segregate definitively the records of single world catastrophes. More important, it seems, is to establish, one, that there were physical upheavals of a global character in historical times. Two, that these catastrophes were caused by extraterrestrial agents. And three, that these agents can be identified. There are many implications that follow from these conclusions. I refer to them in the epilogue so that I can omit reference to them here. A few readers went over this book in manuscript and made valuable suggestions and remarks in chronological order. Of their reading, they are Dr. Horace M. Callan, formerly Dean of Graduate Faculty of the New School for Social Research, New York, John J. O'Neill, Science Editor of the New York Herald Tribune, James Putnam, Associate Editor of the Macmillan Company, Clifton Fadman, Literary Critic and Commenter, Gordon A. Atwater, Chairman and Curator of the Hayden Planetarium and the American Museum of Natural History in New York. The last two read the work at their own request after Mr. O'Neill had discussed it in an article in the Herald Tribune of August 11th, 1946. I am indebted to all of them, but I alone am responsible for the content and form. Miss Marion Kuhn cleared the manuscript of grammatical weeds and helped in reading the proofs. Many an author has dedicated his book to his wife or mentioned her in the preface. I've always felt this was somewhat ostentatious, but now that this work is being published, I feel I shall be most ungrateful if I fail to mention that my wife, Ella Shiva, spent almost as much time on it at our desk as I did. I dedicate this book to her. The years when ages and chaos and worlds and collision were written were years of a world catastrophe created by man. The years when ages and chaos and worlds and collision were written were years of a world catastrophe created by man of war that was fought on land, on sea, and in the air. During the time man learned how to take apart a few of the bricks of which the universe is built, the atoms of uranium. If one day he should solve the problem of fission and fusion of the atoms of which the crust of the earth or the water or air are composed, he may by chance, by initiating a chain reaction, take this planet out of the struggle for survival among the members of the celestial sphere. New York, September 1949. The author, the author, the author, the author, the author.